Okay, um, Achel, Jose, I hope you're ready. I think we should we should start. And uh, if there are more people joining in, uh, well, anyway, we are going to record this webinar. <clears throat> so, um, hello, everyone. Uh, Angel, uh, Jose, are you there? Yes, hello. Hello, okay. Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our webinar, Websites and Cookies, who is behind them. Um, this is a second webinar of a series of uh, four webinars uh, that are taking place every two weeks at roughly the same time and on the same day. Uh, you will also be able to revisit all webinars, as I said. Uh, we are recording them, so you can visit them, uh, revisit them on our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in Smooth GDPR, and it will take you to the channel. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Thomas Wiltzek. I am the project manager of Funding Box for the Smooth project. And uh, please let me introduce you to our speakers today, uh, Angel Cuevas and Jose Gonzalez, who both uh, represent uh, Universidad Carlos III de Madrid, uh, which acts as a technical leader of uh, the Smooth project. Angel will give you a quick summary about Smooth and will then hand over to Jose, who will tell us about her party presence on websites and uh, give you a quick uh, smooth GDPR analysis. Mm, I will then give you information about our upcoming test pilots uh, and how you can become a better tester and uh, even receive some rewards uh, for your participation. We will then finalize the webinar with a Q&A session where you can send us your questions uh, in the chat here on the right. So please um, uh, write down your questions throughout the webinar and, um, and you can then post them uh, at the very end. And I would say that's uh, it from me at the moment. So without further ado, uh, please meet uh, Angel Cuevas. Hello, Angel. Hello, everybody. So, uh, my name is Angel Cuevas and I'm professor at the University of Carlos III in Madrid. And I'm gonna go quick because the interesting part is what my colleague uh, Jose Gonzalez is gonna present afterwards. I'm gonna show you a quick overview of why Smooth uh, is there and what we are pursuing. So basically, uh, when the GDPR, uh, the GDPR was uh, released in May 2018, there were a bunch of news that were uh, indicating that uh, that companies were not ready for for the GDPR, and especially if we think on on SMEs and micro enterprises, which are the most vulnerable ones, uh, because obviously they don't have the resources that large companies have, and probably they don't have the the background and the knowledge that large large companies have, uh, were really exposed uh, in a bad way to 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 this new uh, environment. Next next slide. Next slide. Okay. So, uh, and something very important is that actually the uh, the, the weight of the SMEs in Europe uh, is huge. So basically, more than ninety percent of the of the of the companies in Europe are uh, SMEs, and out of them, nine out of ten are actually micro enterprises, and they are responsible by uh, almost at a 66 percent of the employees so two out of three employees in europe are generated by small companies so letting them alone in front of the gdpr uh we believe is a big issue so next slide so we have done some some uh surveys uh, to understand what are the necessities of these companies and basically uh they uh, are requiring awareness they want to know what the gdpr is and how they are affected they uh, push up front that they don't have that much time. They have to take care of their business and they cannot take care of, of, of uh, learning a lot about this law. Uh, the cost, they cannot spend a lot of money to adapt their business to 
uh, the GDPR. Uh, they want something simple. So basically, they want something that is easy to use uh, in order to verify uh, the compliance with the GDPR, and they want trust. So basically, they want to be sure that whatever they are doing, or what they, when they are told they are doing something good, to be sure this is good. Next slide. So here is some numbers. I'm not going to go through through all of them because it's a it's a uh, uh, it's too much information. But basically, uh, what we did is analyzing a, a set at the beginning of the project, a set of, of SMEs, and we found that most of them do not have like informing informed consent or cookie policies, etc., in place. And and even if they have they have that. They don't know what is inside, and it seems this outsourced, and they don't really know what a Google policy is and why it's used for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In terms of, of security, something similar. They very few companies apply security measures to protect the data they are storing for customers or employers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, next slide. Uh, later, here is some other results of the survey, in which more or less are aligning to the to the main conclusion I presented before. So basically, they want low uh, SMEs wants low cost solution. They want to take more than thirty minutes uh, uh, for a solution that is related to the GDPR. Uh, they are not in hurry, so basically, they don't want something immediate. So they are fine to wait one week to obtain a report. And basically, the price. Uh, the companies we survey are, are willing to pay is around 50 euros per year. Uh, some many companies are, are, are willing to have, let's say, templates that they can use or general templates that they can be reused for their business uh, in regard to the GDPR. Okay, next slide. So what the, the, the smooth project is looking for is basically to assist uh, micro enterprises to adopt and be compliant with the GDPR by designing as implementing an easy to use and affordable cloud cloud based uh, service. Okay, we want something simple to use. We want something which is general purpose and is worth for a large amount of companies. Uh, so we are not uh, looking into specific sectors. We want to something to be inexpensive in the order of that order of 500, uh, sorry, 50 euros, 200 euros to obtain a compliance report. And basically, uh, obviously, this is not magic. And and what we are looking is few aspects of the GDPR. Those one that the expert in our consortium has considered that uh, are more relevant for uh, the most the the, the the vast majority of micro enterprises. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so just just for the purpose, we 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 are working in two main axes. One is awareness. We are uh, generating a mobile app and a website, which is focused on on micro enterprises where they can find uh, adult information regarding the GDPR. So uh, these are not public released, but I think in August we'll have the public release of both the website and the mobile app, so you can install uh, them and basically uh, get information about the GDPR uh, in the context of SMEs and, and micro enterprises. And later, the, the, the other objective, the operational objective, is creating a, a cloud platform uh, which allows, in a simple way, to obtain a, compli a compliance uh, report regarding some of the main aspects of the GDPR which impact the, the which impact the, 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 the 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 micro enterprises. Next slide. So basically, uh, just to give you a brief, uh, a very brief overview of what we are looking exactly. Basically, when you uh, work, you register in the platform, you have to fill a, a questionnaire where we make you a bunch of questions. Uh, with this already provides us a lot of lot of information to create the compliance report. And later, we have developed a set of technologies that would do is first we ask you to upload the legal document you have, like inform, informed consent, cookie policies, uh, privacy policies for your websites, mobile apps, or whatever, uh, for other purposes you have cookie policies or, or privacy policies. And we automatically analyze them to be sure they include the main elements uh, the GDPR uh, is requested uh, in, a, in, a, in, in this type of legal document. 
The second thing we ask you is to upload a sample of the database where you are storing information for your customers. Uh, that could be an Excel file if you have an Excel file, a sample of MySQL uh, database, etc. And what we do is analyzing automatically uh, personal data items that are being stored in your in your database. Uh, later, we also ask you to upload your website, uh, your URL, in case you have one, and we analyze automatically your website to see if you are uh, implementing some basic measures that should be there. So for instance, whether you are uh, informing your customers in case you are placing cookies or third parties are present in your website. So basically you saw some kind of uh, uh, pop-up box or something in which the user has to proactively accept uh, the fact that you are placing third party cookies or opening third party uh, connections. And, uh, and also, if we have a mobile app, we do something similar in mobile apps. And later, we also mix all this information. The place, the, the fact that you are placing third party cookies is not illegal, but your cookie policy should be reporting that. Should be reporting that you are placing third party cookies and from which companies uh, this cookie, uh, from which companies are obtaining information on your website. Uh, the same, the fact that you are collecting personal data in your database is not illegal, but in your in your legal documents you should you should inform your customers that you are storing a uh, personal information uh, or at least you should you should uh, report that you should justify that this personal information is mandatory and is obligatory for the for the purpose of your business so for instance imagine you have a business in which the relation you have with your customers is a uh, via email exclusively if this is via email exclusively uh, you shouldn't be collecting postal addresses or mobile phone uh, numbers. So if we find that in your website, in your in your in your database, but in your in your legal documents, you are in, not you are not informing your customers that you are collecting that information, which is not required for 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 your business. Then we'll generate a warning informing you that okay, you might not need to use this this information. So at the end, uh, the compliant, out of this, all this analysis, the entry questionnaire and all these technical models, we create a compliant, a compliant report in which we basically uh, create warnings in which we say, okay, look at this, look at your website because this and this might be wrong. So we give you hints that allows you uh, contacting the company that has created your website or uh, analyzing your, your database to be sure whether you need to keep collecting certain information you are already collecting, et cetera, et cetera. So we provide you information that allows you uh, becoming compliant with the, with the GDPR. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is just a, a snapshot of how the platform looks like. So when you start and enter the questionnaire, here is one, one snapshot of, of the type of question you need, you need to answer. Uh, this is the consortium, which is created by by a top technical partners. Uh, we have also legal entities, including uh, two data protection authorities in the consortium, uh, small business representatives. So basically partners that are close to small businesses and are representing small businesses and a standardization partner as well. Next slide. Uh, what is the current status? We have finalized the implementation of the technical models. The platform is also finalized and we are now testing it. And uh, the most important uh, phase, uh, the most important challenge we have in front, uh, uh, which is just yes, we are tweaking the, the last the last things of the of the platform, and we want to go into an ambitious uh, piloting phase. If I'm not wrong, but this uh, uh, Matthias will inform you how you can join this piloting uh, afterwards. Uh, but what we want now is to test our technology with real uh, micro enterprises. Obviously. Those micro enterprises participate in the piloting. The, the, the good point is that they, they, they if I'm not wrong, but uh, uh, Thomas will clarify this later, but obviously you will, you, will have, you will be able to test this for free. So that's all from my side, and I give my, the floor to my colleague, Jose. Uh, thank you very much, Angel. Uh, well, hello. Uh, my name is, is Jose, and well, I'm part from UC3M. Uh, basically, uh, we are uh, working on the part that Angel has presented, 
we are analyzing uh, the websites of uh, enterprises in order to know if they are compliant or not with the GDPR. So here in my presentation, uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, with a little uh, overview on how third parties and cookies uh, work uh, across the, the internet. In order for you to know uh, in which way you should implement your, your website to make it compliant with this new GDPR. So basically, I'm going to cover the contents that you are seeing here, and I'm going to end up with a little demo on how our our module, uh, which is part from for, from this uh, project, is is working. So next slide, please. So we are going to to start talking about uh, the things that are shared uh, across the the internet, and well, you may know, but I, I'm going to introduce it to yourself. Uh, is that uh, on the internet there are so many things that uh, are uh, that are shared. Us usually, when you go to a to a website, uh, there are uh, multiple connections that try to sort uh, not only things to render the page you are visiting, but also uh, personal information in order to uh, provide you in the future with uh, better uh, experience or better advertisements and, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. So basically, this is done uh, with um, with a connection to third parties. Uh, a third party is um, a domain or a service that is not the website itself, but uh, it is used by the website to uh, communicate or provide some kind of, of, of information between them. Uh, next slide, please. So basically, uh, the third party is other domain than the uh, first party, which is the website that you are currently uh, visiting. Next slide, please. What happens with, with third parties is, is that they are uh, used uh, to share information. Uh, commonly, uh, the information is about you, about the user uh, who is visiting the, the web page. But also, it could be information to, to render the page. Uh, next slide, please. So the idea on how uh, third parties on, on how the website uh, share this information with, with third parties uh, usually is done with the use of cookies, but it also be done only uh, by network connections. I'm going to go briefly with, through this, these two points. Uh, a cookie, apart from being a, a biscuit, as many of you know, uh, it is also a, a piece of information it could be an identifier uh, of uh, you, of your browser, or uh, something else. It is a piece of, of information that uh, it is stored in, in your uh, computer and could be, could be shared. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, usually, cookies are, are known as browser cookies, but the complete name uh, for those who are curious is magic cookie. And the idea of a magic cookie or a cookie is that uh, it stores information that can be uh, shared across different domains uh, or websites without altering this information. So, next slide. This information uh, is stored in your computer. And uh, for example, let's say that uh, it is an identifier of you uh, in order to uh, know in the future uh, who you are or who are your interests are if, or provide you a better uh, experience. So this uh, information is stored in your computer and uh, the website uses this information and shares it across the different domains or uh, even in the first, first domain. So cookies are your followers on the internet, on the internet, let's say. They keep track of what you are doing there. It is important to know uh, that you can uh, remove uh, the cookies. You uh, have a bunch of information on the internet on how to do this. It's not the topic of this presentation. But let's continue with, with, with this talk. And the next question is, are cookies bad? Well, not necessarily. We have this misconception of cookies, like we have to delete the, the cookies. They are bad. And they are not necessarily bad, for example. When you are uh, on a domain and you uh, are logged in a service, 
uh, there are authentication and session cookies that uh, allows you to be logging. And if their cookies uh, uh, didn't exist, you couldn't uh, be logged in in, in in services, for example. Or another example is when you go to a shopping uh, website and you purchase a, a, a product uh, in order for the website that you have uh, already added this product on your card list or you have viewed the product, it keeps this track uh, by using cookies. So not necessarily cookies uh, are bad. The next question then is, do cookies disappear? Well, it depends. Uh, there are three kinds of cookies. We have session cookies. They disappear whenever you leave the page. We have authentication cookies. These are the cookies that are needed in order to maintain you logged in or to log in into the service in order to know uh, who you are for that service. Let's say you are logged in into Facebook. And there are also the tracking cookies. And these are the most persistent ones. They don't disappear. They have an expiration date. But usually, this expiration date is years from now. So uh, uh, whenever you visit that page, the cookie is, is there. And the cookies uh, of uh, the tracking cookies are stored in your computers until you uh, remove them or until the expiration date. That could be, for example, 2030. So it's uh, like permanently. Uh, so are cookies safe? safe? Well, in general terms, they are. And they are because, if you remember, we have said that cookies are uh, pieces of information that cannot be altered. So unless you have uh, any kind of malware or virus uh, inserted in your computer, this information is not going to be altered. So the problem is not in the cookie itself, it's in uh, with whom the cookie is shared uh, all across the, the, the internet. And for this, uh, uh, for this question, I'm going to uh, give you a little insight about uh, what is a, a connection. So a connection is a, a sharing of information through the internet. So basically, it's a communication between two endpoints. So it could be two endpoints on the same page. Remember, we have talked that the same page is called first domain, or it could be a a communication between two different pages or domains. In this case, it could be a third party communication or connection. For example, when you load a, a, a page and it has a YouTube video uh, embedded on it, uh, this page is making a connection to YouTube servers in order to uh, let you uh, display the, that video. And what happens uh, with connections is uh, our next uh, question. Well, connections share the information across the web and connections could allow different domains to share any kind of information with cookies or without cookies. And this is important to, to, to highlight because we think that, the, that, that uh, if there are no cookies uh, in the process, then information cannot be shared, but it could be uh, still shared. So the connections are, are, are used to share any kind of information, your IP, your location, information about your computer, information about social media, activity, uh, and so on. So this is the question that I have already answered. Uh, if there are no cookies, then they can share any personal information. Well, the answer is that they still can share your personal information. So a website can still share your data without using cookies. So whenever we uh, build a, a, a website, we have to be aware not only of the cookies that uh, our browser for this website is storing, but also the connections we are making to third domains that could be sharing uh, uh, information of our users. So uh, we have to be aware of that in order to provide the users with this information. So they are um, they agree with that. So examples of third-party connections that you may see, well, there is the example I've explained it before, the, this YouTube or video example embedded in your web page. And for example, we also have uh, these uh, social connectors uh, we can add to our website and uh, they, they do uh, the connection to this social network in order well, to share any kind of information or 
that's an example of connections you see but there are also examples of connections you don't see and uh, usually is through the uh, through pixels pixels are uh, small pieces of of code well are pieces of code that uh, are embedded in the page uh, and usually they have a small or even a null size so you can can't see them but they are there and they are used in too many services uh, to uh, uh, to share information uh, of the user in order usually they are used for advertising purposes so in order to provide you with uh, better uh, ads in the future to know better your interests and so on so be aware of that not everything that is present in a website uh, you, you you are going to see that so you could have also uh, pieces of codes that are invisible but they still uh, are uh, sharing information with third parties so a website always relies on third parties well not always it depends on what uh, your website does uh, there could be a website that uh, has no uh, need to, to connect to a third domain and that's okay uh, and there are websites that could uh, connect to a third party and that's also okay if you inform your users um, and if you only connect to uh, or the connections to your uh, to your to your domain are the first parties connections or cookies and to another domain third party so remember this in order to uh, implement your your website and in order to implement the banners uh, in which you have uh, to provide uh, the the consent from the user so um what is the problem then with all this information uh, i have provided you well the problem is that as we have seen third party connections are sharing all kind of information not all information needed to load the page like images or videos but also they are sharing your personal information in order to know your interests the things you visit uh, you visit the, the the time you spend on the page and so on and not always has to do with cookies so then you as a as a as a, a website uh, developer or as an enterprise what you should do is that you must always ask at least in the european union under the gdpr but i recommend you to do this in any kind of uh, of country is to ask for permission uh, for the user to accept that you are going to use uh, or place cookies on open connections to uh, third parties or third domains and you should avoid to place these cookies or these uh, or, or open these connections until the user has accepted uh, this uh, this this request and basically uh, this is what we are doing uh, when we are analyzing uh, your your website so the method for for knowing if uh, if your website is uh, well implemented is that we go to your web page we use an automatic uh, methodology and we visit your your web page or a certain web page like it uh, like if it was the first time we go to that page so we check if there is any kind of open connections to third domains or third uh, party cookies placed on on your website before uh, looking at any kind of banner so later we look for a banner asking for uh, our consent to uh, accept the presence of third-party cookies, third-party connections in the website. And we uh, click on the accept button. Once we click on the accept button, we still run, uh, we do again the same process and we run again, uh, checking for third parties and cookies. So the idea of this methodology is the following. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we know with this analysis uh, if you are doing things properly as a as enterprise in your website so if before accepting the banner are uh, you have third parties present third party cookies or third party connections in your website there is a problem because the user has not given you any consent to place third party things in your website but before accept if before accepting the banner there are no third parties then everything is perfect later on uh, we can analyze if after accepting the banner there are still no third parties well everything is perfect if you don't have third parties everything is perfect but if after accepting the banner you have third parties present 
that's okay. But that's okay if you have mentioned that in your privacy policy. So if you mention the information you are gathering and the information you are sharing with uh, other third domains and the and the user has accepted that with a, a, a banner, then everything is, is perfect as well. And the other uh, case is that you don't have any banner. If you don't have any banner, then uh, you have a problem if there are still third parties present. So next, I'm going to provide you with, uh, with a, a, a demo on how uh, our module is analyzing all this information. Uh, this is a, a, a video. I don't know if you have to click uh, the play button or, or not. So this is uh, a demonstration I, uh, I recorded this uh, uh, yesterday uh, afternoon about how, how our, our uh, methodology works. So basically, uh, our methodology is going to analyze uh, this uh, enterprise, which is uh, uh, a, small, uh, a small business. And uh, it's going to do that uh, in several iterations. Uh, why do we do several iterations of our analysis? Well, uh, not always uh, third parties uh, are present at the same time. That means that a third party could appear uh, just now and not in 10 minutes, or uh, not now and in 10 minutes it could appear. So in order to know if there are dynamic third parties uh, in your website, we run this uh, through time in different iterations. In this example, I only made two iterations to uh, show you how this works, but in the in the project we are uh, we have been working on, uh, this is a little bit more complex, and the iterations has a time, uh, have a time gap of a larger amount of time. And through those uh, iterations, uh, the, 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 the module, our module is analyzing uh, the existence of third parties uh, before uh, any kind of banner, the existence of a banner. In this case, you see that we have identified that there is a banner present in that uh, web page and later the existence again of third parties after a banner in order to provide you with the, detail, the detailed information uh, I, I talked in the previous uh, slide. So once uh, this uh, uh, analysis uh, is done, we create uh, three, uh, J, uh, three, three files. Uh, they are uh, JSON or text files in order to communicate with other modules that are providing the, the final report and so on. But just for the purpose of uh, this presentation, I'm going to provide you with information we are collecting or we are extracting in, in, our, in our module. And this is uh, obviously the, the, the report. And we are generating a, a report in which we say uh, the website, okay, you have a banner, but we have found a different kind of warnings. In this example, we have found third parties and cookies before uh, you before we accepted the, the banner. So we provide you with information and with some recommended actions on how to fix this. We also uh, have analyzed everything and uh, we have provide you, uh, we can provide you with the connections, with the third parties that are present, what kind of cookies are present in your website. So basically, this is all the, the analysis uh, we see. For example, in here, you can see third parties present in your website, like, like LinkedIn, uh, Google, and, and so on. And finally, uh, we are going to give you uh, with the companies that are uh, present in your uh, website, third parties, companies that are present in your website, and they don't appear in your privacy policy. So in that case, you could add them to your privacy policy or you could remove them from uh, connections uh, in your website in order for you to know all this information. So I hope you enjoyed my, my talk. Uh, this is uh, what our module uh, does. Uh, I had also another demo uh, in case this uh, didn't work or something like that. But uh, if everything is perfect, that is seems it is, uh, I'm, I'm glad to ask any kind of uh, question you may have at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. That was very, very insightful uh, and very interesting. Also, Uncle, uh, thanks a lot for 
uh, giving us uh, so much information about the Smooth project. So I will quickly, I believe we are running a bit over time, but um, since you have explained so well what the uh, project is actually about and, uh, and, and, and what the platform is going to do, um, it's, it's, you have made it very easy for me to to actually go to the next point in, in our agenda, which is how to participate in the pilots. As Uncle said before, uh, we have two pilots uh, that are coming up to test the platform. The platform is uh, almost finalized, uh, but we, of course, need feedback uh, from uh, the real world and from uh, the different um, micro enterprises. So you can indeed you can indeed uh, join those pilots uh, the, the the next one is going to take place uh, start in the first of july actually and then later in the year we are doing a market uh, a pilot which is even bigger this uh, next pilot in july we are looking for 60 companies uh, minimum to to test the platform and then later in the year we will be at the end of the year we will be looking for uh, 500 companies um, where we will do a, a, a different kind of tests so um, in order to become a better tester what do you have to do it's fairly simple <clears throat> it's fairly straightforward you just go to the smooth uh, website uh, which is uh, uh, smoothplatform.eu and at the bottom of that website, you can uh, you can see that we are actually uh, recruiting over here. Um, we're asking you to get involved. And once you uh, click the sign up here sign at the bottom left corner, uh, you will be taken to the application platform uh, site, um, which is smooth at fundingbox.com. And um, here you uh, you can apply to become a beta tester. Uh, there are indeed uh, different um, uh, rewards. Um, a part of uh, uh, getting your compliance report and uh, uh, just as how Jose explained, uh, to already be able to assess your GDPR compliance level with that. We give away certain rewards if you finalize the uh, the actual um, beta testing session. So just to very quickly show you what the process is like, as you can see, it's really straightforward. You do, you do you complete the application form on the site I showed you before. You will then receive an email. Uh, email confirmation with a link uh, to as access the actual platform uh, that we are testing. Uh, there will be some uh, information, so a tutorial and how to do so and access codes, etc. And you will then uh, enter the platform and you will be asked to complete a, a questionnaire, an intro questionnaire, and then later a user experience evaluation report. Um, you can see here that we work with three different modalities of uh, uh, beta tester modalities that have different rewards. So um, if you only complete the entry questionnaire, um, which will take you around 30 to 45 minutes, uh, you would get a one year free subscription to the Smooth platform uh, or an equivalent to six reports. So if you're a small company, if you're a startup, uh, obviously, your uh, your development is very fast, and uh, requirements might change. So, do you have the possibility to to check and to check again uh, if you are uh, actually compliant with GDPR during your development? And um, then the modality two uh, would be uh, doing the entry questionnaire and the UX uh, user survey that will take you a little bit longer around 45 to 60 minutes and on top of the one year free subscription uh, to the smooth platform once the platform is live i forgot to say that before and you would get a 60 euro amazon voucher and the modality three is a bit different here we want actual direct interaction 
with our team via a Skype meeting. You will be able to register for a slot because uh, there are limited slots. Only 60 beta testers will take uh, will uh, be accepted. So uh, we will send an uh, email one week before and you can register to that if you have applied to become a beta tester and here the interaction is going to be direct via skype call as i said and uh, it will take a little bit longer around 55 to 70 minutes uh, and you will also have a one year free subscription and a 100 euro amazon voucher once the uh, platform is actually live uh, after all the testings and all the pilots. So this is about the uh, to become a beta tester. We would also uh, like to invite you to our online community, uh, which you can find um, when you go to, I'm very sorry, when you go to this application page, you will see at the top right, uh, corner there's a community link there for example or if not uh, you can go directly to the community or by our website there are different points of entry and uh, well the community is in order to create uh, a space where the peers can interact uh, different people maybe even find business opportunities. So the idea is to, uh, we have one space, which is called introduce yourself, where you can enter, uh, talk, tell a bit about yourself, start to talk to other people. So sort of a networking space where we also post a lot of information and news about the project and in general about the topic. So uh, we want to create a community here where you can go back to. And then during the different pilots and in general, we have several different support spaces, as we call them, uh, where you can uh, pose legal questions or uh, speak about technical pilots bugs. And our experts will then get in touch with you and uh, solve those those queries in order to join the smooth uh, community as you can see here it is part of the funding box platform funding box has uh, a wider platform with uh, different communities uh, where it hosts different communities uh, of uh, different projects and innovators it's very easy to uh, to join uh, you can uh, go to this website and very simply sign in, uh, you get a username and, and then you can easily move around the platform itself, look for the smooth community, uh, maybe any other communities, um, uh, but yeah, especially the, the smooth community. It's, uh, it's, it's very simple. Um, and I think we would, we are at the end now at the Q and A session. Uh, we are a bit over time, so um, I will uh, invite you to send any questions through the chat, please. And of course, we will we will try to respond to them. Let's see. Uh, we give you some minutes. At the moment, there are no questions has been a fairly long webinar and detailed, so please feel free to ask any questions to Angel, to Jose, or to myself. Okay, if there are no questions, um, um, I would like to conclude the webinar. Thanks a lot for being here, for, uh, for your interest in Smooth. Uh, please have a look at our social media channels um, and um, join us in our next webinar uh, in two weeks. Um, I would also like to thank again Angel Jose for your presentations. I can see here that people have very much enjoyed it and that it was very informative. Uh, thank you, Jose Angel, and I guess I see you next time.
Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye, Angel. Thank you. Bye. -bye.